This argument is unavailing because a court is required to interpret a statute as written and not to construe the statute to reach a result that it thinks the legislature was intending to accomplish. Moreover, although the argument has intuitive appeal, it ultimately fails because the plaintiffs are confusing the threshold question concerning the applicability of the statute with the question whether a malicious prosecution plaintiff can establish a probability of success on the merits. The purpose of the action and this section, 425.16, is not to prevent lawsuits that arise from the exercise of constitutional rights, but it is to deter frivolous and improperly motivated lawsuits arising from these rights. Section 425.16 provides a fast and inexpensive unmasking and dismissal of frivolous claims that are subject to the statute. Thus, a determination that the statute applies to a malicious prosecution claim will not prevent valid malicious prosecution claims, but will require a plaintiff bringing this claim to demonstrate early on that the complaint is supported by a sufficient prima facie showing of facts to sustain a favorable judgment. This result is consistent with the disfavored nature of the malicious prosecution tort and the view that such claims are too frequently used as a dilatory and harassing device and that the remedy for frivolous litigation does not lie in an expansion of malicious prosecution liability. In a related argument, the Chavezes contend that because the court in the underlying action determined Mendoza's unsuccessful causes of action lacked evidentiary support, the action did not involve a constitutionally protected right to petition. Section 425.16 applies only when the claims arise from an exercise of a constitutionally protected right, and the courts have recognized that a person does not have a constitutionally protected right to file a complaint that is unsupported by the facts. But the legislature did not intend that in order to invoke the special motion to strike the defendant must first establish her actions are constitutionally protected under the First Amendment as a matter of law. Instead, under the statutory scheme, a court must generally presume the validity of the claimed constitutional right in the first step of the analysis and then permit the parties to address the issue in the second step of the analysis if necessary. Otherwise, the second step would become superfluous in almost every case, resulting in an improper shifting of the burdens. A limited exception to the rule precluding a court from determining the validity of the asserted constitutional right in the first step of the analysis applies only when the defendant indisputably concedes the claim arose from illegal or constitutionally unprotected activity. The exception does not apply here because the parties dispute whether Mendoza's claims were supported in the initial action. The Chavezes next argue that Section 425.16 is inapplicable because the malicious prosecution action could not have had a chilling effect on Mendoza's decision to assert the earlier claims because Mendoza's lawsuit terminated before the Chavezes filled their malicious prosecution lawsuit. However, as this court has recognized, the potential for a malicious prosecution claim does have a chilling effect on the willingness of persons to report crimes or pursue legal rights and remedies in court, even though the claim is necessarily brought after the termination of the prior action. 
Moreover, the courts have never held section 425.16 applies only when a defendant's exercise of his or her First Amendment rights is ongoing. The critical point is whether the cause of action uh, itself was based on an act in furtherance of the right of petition or free speech. See Computer Express Supra. 93, California Appellate Court at pages 1002 to 1003. 113, California Reporter, 2nd, 625. Claims that arise from a defendant's prior free speech or petition activities are subject to an anti-slap motion regardless of whether the protected activities have concluded before the lawsuit was filed. The Chavez's final argument is that section 425.16 does not apply here because there was no showing they were in a position to obtain an economic advantageous element by prosecuting a meritless action designed to divert resources from some other political or judicial contest. 